Hey guys, this is Lunatic Fringe. How's everybody doing? That's my best three dog impersonation. I've been playing way too much Fallout 3. Uh, I got the Game of the Year edition dirt cheap, and uh, I've actually been really enjoying it, even though uh, uh, I actually still prefer New Vegas myself. But uh, basically, I, I, what I wanted to talk about was... Um, uh, I'm hope Well, first of all, I hope you're enjoying the stalker footage I just put up. Uh, let me tell you, it felt really good to shoot the get out of your stalker guy in the fucking face. Um, uh, I also wanted to mention that um, I, I do have... Uh, uh, I was planning on recording some Evil Genius today. Uh, unfortunately, last night I, I burned my hand. Uh, uh, I burned my gaming hand. Um, not not ri not severely. Uh, it's not like I have even third degree burns. It's just my hand really really fucking hurts, and you probably don't. Uh, well, first of all, I don't want to play a game where I'm just swearing and guzzling painkillers. So that's one thing, and you guys probably don't want to hear that either. So I just need a couple of days until basically I regrow my fingerprints. <laughs> and uh, actually, maybe I can go ahead and commit some crimes now. Never mind. No, no, bad idea. <laughs> But, uh, so basically, um, instead, uh, uh, basically what I wanted to do was, um, uh, if you watched my intermission video a, a while back when I was talking about, um, Company of Heroes, uh, when I was playing Company of Heroes and talking about E3, uh, I'm kind of one of those guys who, who, when I say something, and then I kind of change my mind on it later, I like to actually go back and talk about it again, um, uh, with that being said, um, XCOM, you, you obviously know what I'm talking about now, because I, I, I talked for about 15 minutes, I uh, talked for about 15 minutes about XCOM, and uh, uh, let's just say my opinion on it has changed a bit. Um, they, they finally released a, a, a demo gameplay, uh, basically just some basic gameplay showing what everything's like. I believe it's the same... Uh, uh, thing they showed journalists at E3. That's the thing that I was talking about in that video too. And I just kind of wanted to go through it uh, on YouTube. I'm recording with Fraps, whatever. Um, and I, I just wanted to uh, to go through it and talk about a few things, just because um, I I remember saying something like I I think that this is a homage to XCOM and stuff like that. Um, I would like to retract that statement now, <laughs> and uh, I would like to openly admit that I, I, I'm very likely wrong in that opinion, and, and I will openly admit when I'm wrong, because uh, just from what I've seen so far, and I will talk about these things uh, uh, when the gameplay is going on, uh, they, 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 the developers have a certain opinion of the game right now. So uh, this has some developer commentary on it. Uh, I'm going to have the volume turned down really low so you can hear me over them. Um, there are a few things I've made notes of that I'm going to uh, turn the sound back up. I'm going to pause in a few places, too, just so I can rant for a bit, stuff like that. Uh, if you guys want to see more of this, um, I'm actually probably going to record a Metro 2030, uh, uh, Metro Last Light, uh, released a bunch of uh, gameplay footage, too. And I, I kind of want to go through that as well, just because I want to get something uh, up right now. And I also want to uh, want to talk about Metro, just because I'm playing Stalker right now, and the games are so similar. Uh, so anyways, let's get started on this. So basically, if you don't know... Well, hang on, actually. So basically, if you don't know what XCOM's about, um, the original XCOM was basically uh, set in the late 90s at the turn of the century. And basically what it was about is that um, the, the, the world has basically become swamped with these UFOs, and no one has been able to catch them, no one's been able to figure out wh what they want, what they need. Uh, what they're here for, basically. And so this uh, government agency called XCOM was created. That uh, it, it was a international organization, which basically um, uh, the whole point of the game was basically, you know, building bases, uh, going out, shooting down UFOs, and then collecting technology from them, figuring out basically what the uh, the visitors' plans were, what they were actually trying to do to the planet, stuff like that. And uh, it was a really, really atmospheric and really, really uh, uh, interesting game, just because it didn't really tell you that much, and it, it, it kept this very dark, depressing atmosphere throughout the entire game. And uh, uh, very much forced the point that that, you know, you're kind of the last... You're, you're the last stand of humanity versus this this impending alien invasion. You've got to do something or else or else the world's screwed. So basically what they've done with, with the new XCOM game is, uh, as I mentioned in the old video, they've moved it to a first-person perspective rather than a, uh, than a tactical one. Uh, they've also um, changed the story a little bit rather than... Uh, beginning as an international organization in the 90s, they've trumped it up to be an American, you know, conspiracy 
men in black kind of organization in the 60s. So um, let's get started. And, and I just want to talk about a few things just because this video, well, things in this video kind of bugged me. So let's just turn up the developers for a bit. He's going to be driving the demo we show to you today. This is our E3 2011 XCOM demo walkthrough. Now, see, I actually like, uh, uh, that actually looks like real UFO footage I've seen. They're, they're actually doing a pretty good job giving that kind of 60s atmosphere, that kind of transitional 50s to 60s suburban uh, uh, atmosphere going. Uh, by no means does it look as good as something like L.A. Noir, which, which had an amazing amount of detail to it, um, it uh, for a lot of situations. But um, And this is one thing that, that, that's bugging me. They, they've really started to make it incredibly obvious. Hang on, I just want to turn down the developers because they're going to start talking soon. Um, basically, they've made it really, really obvious. Like, see, that they're already showing some of the big alien objects and stuff like that. There's no... Uh, uh, surprise to anything. It's just, oh look, this is here. There's no mystery to the aliens at all. When you when you played the original XCOM, for for the starting bit, you were literally just fighting most of the time, uh, uh, you know, little greys. And you know, if you you know, uh, uh, were in a really bad position, maybe you had to fight off a terror mission or something like that. Uh, a, a lot of the times, you never really saw what the the big alien force behind. The, the basically, you know, the foot soldiers was till the end, and they're just blatantly revealing it right now, and that bugs me because there's no mystery to it. That child's family and thousands of others like it are the stakes in this conflict uh, with the alien enemy. But here in 1962, Kennedy is president. The Cuban Missile Crisis is threatening to turn the. Okay, so it's in 1962. Remember that 1962. Remember that year because I'm going to talk about that soon. Cold War hot, and. Your job is to assemble a team of the finest minds in asymmetrical warfare to repel this threat for, for which there is no field experience. These guys are the analysts who are assembling mission profiles from emergency calls all around the country and feeding it to you and your squad. Our job is a little more direct. Uh, what we're going to do is assemble our team and head out into the field, capture the enemy technology, and turn their own weapons against them. Okay, so they're at least trying to encompass stuff like what happened in the original XCOM, where you basically collected alien technology, you know, uh, you know, reverse engineered it to your own ends, developed technology, uh, developed new weapons and, and stuff based off of that. So, I'll just hear some of the dialogue. Agent Carter, a real pleasure to meet you. I'm Agent Leon Barnes. So this guy's Agent Barnes. He can speak to the strengths and weaknesses of all the agents available to you with authority. Now, the facial animations are pretty good. Oh, hang on. Something important is coming up. I'll just pause it. Now, the facial animations are pretty good. Um, once again, this isn't obviously the final product, so I kind of hold my reserves. But you saw how, how the lip syncing was, was very, very inhuman, very, very off. It, it doesn't seem natural in any kind of way. And by all means, I can improve on that. But right now... Even though the facial, like uh, the the facial structure, actually looks pretty good, um, you you get such an un well for me at least you get a really uncanny valley feeling going on when you when you see these people talking. They just they seem like mannequins with uh, 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 you know with uh, silicon uh, you know uh, mouth mouth pieces that that are moving around and it's just it's creepy. It's creepy. Like. Uh, uh, if, if you're going to go for that kind of option, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest doing, you know, going all out and doing L.A. Noir or anything like that because that requires a lot of work and a lot of quality actors. But, you know, try to, to, to do, you know, to, to, you know, try and work that Uncanny Valley feeling out because there are ways that you can do that. You, you can, uh, when you have near lifelike uh, uh, animations, uh, you, you can remove the the uncanny valley element by by there's certain tricks you can do stuff like that um i hope everyone knows what the uncanny canny valley is uh if you don't it's basically the uh it was this term coined by a robotics uh, uh i think it, his name was makari miro or something like that i can't can't remember his name um but it was basically um uh, as robots become more and more lifelike um eventually they become to a point where it's so close to human yet that that uh, uh, it's it's so close to human that it's almost disturbing and and, and creepy uh, uh, rather than comforting to a human. Um, 
So that that's basically what the Uncanny Valley is, and you start to experience that a lot more in video games as they move to uh, to more realistic graphics. Anyway, let's just keep going because these guys have some stuff. Is full of big fat RPG nerds well, like me. Well, to you with authority. Let's just jump back for a second so we can hear the developers again. So true confession time. 2K Marin is full of big fat RPG nerds like me, and. This underground base is a true social space where you can meet with your fellow field officers and discuss strategies to repel the aliens and sort of look at what it's like to experience the emotional cost of this kind of uh, invasion from within. Now, I like this idea and I, I like the fact that they're doing this, but there, there is inherent issues with it as well because they're not really allowing a, a, a high scale customization or anything like that. Like if you're that big of an RPG fans, you know, why aren't you allowing more customization options? Uh, as you can see, the um, turn up their commentary a little bit just in case you can't hear it. Uh, as you can see, they do have elements of customization, but if this looks really familiar to you, it is because it's from Mass Effect 2. This is this is completely taken from Mass Effect 2. Absolutely, the power system is exactly the same. They even have the power structure. The the you can see the little pibs going up. Exactly the same style as Mass Effect 2. It's basically like grafted off of Mass Effect 2 onto uh, here. And the campaign, these big fat RPG fans, um, of I'll, I'll get into this later, but the, the game seems the really, really linear for people who seem to be RPG experience. fans. So it just, take a look at it, it doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, let's just keep listening. So now they're basically showing you, you know... Harvey went with well, defensive shield that creates a kind of impervious energy bubble anywhere on the battlefield, which can both function as dynamic cover for your team or crowd control for your enemies where you can separate so them. as you can see he's just explaining the power system and stuff like that once again it's very very mass effect like disrupt right here disrupt is taken basically page for page from um oh what's it called in mass effect uh it's the the electric power basically it seems to do the exact same thing oh you're in command of xcom's muscle here on the ops floor we'll supply the brains but there's one mind in particular I need on the team. A man of singular expertise. That's your next mission. That's Angela. She's XCOM's division chief. She's former now CIA. Now I'm going to stop it right here. Okay. Um, as soon as I was seeing a lot of this game, uh, basically my historian gene, because that's what I, you know, that's what I, I um, I'm a really big history buff, uh, uh, started to twitch, basically, my, 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 uh, uh, I, I had such a huge issue with the way they're doing this because basically um, I, I wouldn't make a big deal about it if they weren't so trying to amp up the history themselves. Like I, I'll get to a point later in the video where they're talking about how, you know, like, oh, the 60s were a massive, you know, time of change and revolution and blah, 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 like, you know, they're actually studying the history and going, oh, yeah, you know, we can incorporate this into the game. We can incorporate that into the game. Um but a woman running a, a massive American government organization in 1962? Not going to happen, guys. Not going to fucking happen. It just, it was not possible. Like, just, just in perspective, um, the National Organization for Women only came out in 1966. And the thing they pushed for, which was the Equal Rights Amendment, failed horribly. It collapsed in 1982. Like, there would be no reason that you would have a woman in this position of power in 1962. It makes no sense whatsoever. And if they are really talking, like, and by the way, if if the game had just had this in there to begin with and didn't really, you know, focus on it or anything like that, I would have no problem with it. But the developers are, are, are forcing this, this point home, saying like, oh, the 60s was a big time of change, you know, there was sexual liberation and, and you know, race liberation and stuff like that. Um, just to point out that there was that, uh, 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 black guy who's basically, you know, your, uh, I guess your quartermaster, whatever you want to call him. Um, the civil rights act didn't happen until 19, 1964 guys. Um, he would not be in that position of power. It just, it's, it's not historically accurate in any way. And if they're talking about the history that much, they should do some fucking research because it doesn't make any sense in the context. You can see that these guys have no idea what the history of the 60s was actually about. They're, they're just, you know, thinking that the entire 60s was this big social change movement, you know, from the, from the you know, the, the uh, 
white bread fifties, you know, and stuff like that. They have no idea what they're actually talking about. And it really annoys me when people try and whitewash history and, and convert it into this, this image that they have going through their heads. It just makes no sense to me. Um, that's my little history rant for this episode. Um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of those in lately, but, but I just wanted to point that out just because if you're going to force the point of that kind of history in these games do it right do some research have some political commentary don't just go oh well you know obviously since it's the 60s you could have a woman in power you could have a black man in, in a position of power that didn't work that way it never worked that way so don't try and make social commentary when you don't know what you're talking about and i i, I know i'm just basing this off of a demo footage but the way that they talk about it later on makes you, you know, it, they make it seem like they know what they're talking about when they really, really don't. So let's go forward a little bit. Oh, crap. I'm going to have to pause it in like 10 seconds anyway. Hang on. And her job is to take all of the data that the analysts assemble and turn it into these mission profiles for you to choose between. When we played the original XCOM games, we felt uh, sort of almost overwhelmed with choices uh, in between missions. And so here... And this is exactly why I have to retract that homage statement. Because as soon as he says, we felt that we were overwhelmed by choices from the original XCOM, you immediately know. You immediately know that these guys are not fans of the original, and that they have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to the original game. Because the overwhelming amount of choice was the point of the fucking game. The whole point of the game was to allow you to develop things the way you want it, to build bases where you wanted to build them, to, you know, uh, uh, deal with UFOs when you chose, not when the game told you to. You could deal with, you know, ter you, you could, you know, try and go on a terror mission and have all your di guys die horribly, or you could just send one guy out, see him get shot, and then realize, fuck, we need to get out of here and, you know, uh, retreat. You had so many options, and that was the appeal of the game. The appeal of the game was the ability to customize, was the ability to think, well, what should I research? Should I research plasma weapons or should I research laser weapons? You know, that that was the whole point of the game was this element of choice and and this this ability to do what you wanted to do in the face of this overwhelming force. So you're they're sitting here saying that they were overwhelmed by the choices when in reality, they're basically just saying um, when when in reality, they're just saying. Uh, this game was too complex for us, so we're going to simplify it. I don't want to use the term dumbed down because I, I don't think that's uh, – I think that that uh, is an oversimplification in itself. But the, the, it just shows that these guys um, aren't aiming for any kind of complex gameplay. They're just aiming for gameplay that's been done to death before by games like Mass Effect, by you know other RPGs that do it far better than this. And uh, – it just bugs me. Anyway, um, that that was pretty much the one of the big deal breakers for me. Was as soon as they said that, I was just saying they're going. It's pretty obvious they have no idea what they're talking about when they talk about the original. Which you know, I'll have to retract my old. My uh, as I mentioned before, I'll have to retract my old uh, older statement. I was wrong. <laughs> so let's just keep going. Uh, I don't have. Uh, on the big board, you're able to select between missions that drive the story forward and sort of secondary strategic opportunities in pursuit of a resource. For example, Illyrium By the way, I'm just going to point this out. Dawn of War 2 did this. Dawn of War did this exact same format as well. It just seems like these guys are crimping from whatever else came out. They're not really trying to do anything fresh. They're not trying to do anything new. It's very, very cookie cutter to me. Just from what I've seen of the demo, bear in mind. If, if they expand things more, I might be more interested, but it's so cookie cutter so far. Five is the heavy element that powers all of the alien technology. If we capture that, Harvey can invest it in research and gain uh, long-term growth rewards. Oh, and rewards here's like another thing. I'm just. Oh wait, hang on. I'm gonna. I'll just turn down the sound weapons, and keep it playing in the background, just because I don't want this video to go on for like two hours. Um, basically, uh, uh, that's another thing. You can't shoot down UFOs or anything like that. They basically just say, "Oh, someone else shot something down, or a UFO landed here, or something like that." That misses the whole point. Of, of one of the original games, uh, uh, the uh, the whole element of, of being in control and being able to run this entire organization. You don't run this organization. You're just, you know, 
their office bitch, basically. You're the guy that they send out to do this shit, and it's just ridiculous. It, it just, it takes away one of the best aspects of the original, and I don't know. Uh, anyway, they're talking about a mission right now. This is basically their example mission. They have to go find Dr. Weir, so we're finally going to get to see some, well, we're finally going to get to see some gameplay, so I'll, I'll quiet down for a little bit. So why don't we go ahead and accept that mission uh, and deploy to the field? And remember, there's no one else like Weir. Try not to break him. So if that combat intelligence, that fierce hunger to understand the enemy from the inside out is key to what we feel uh, makes an XCOM experience mechanically, the human relationship to the unknown is critical to the themes of this origin story. Uh, 1962 in the United States is a political hotbed. You had civil rights taking racial tensions and bringing them to the head. You had issues of gender and sexuality. Uh, all of these marginalized voices finally coming to a fever pitch. And this is exactly what I'm talking about when they talk about this kind of stuff. Because they're talking about the 60s in these broad general terms and these lovey-dovey hippie bullshit terms where it's, you know, oh, it was a great time of change and blah de blah de blah It was hard fucking change, man. And it didn't happen just when 1959 ended, you know? Like, it just shows how, how nonsensical and, and how little research these guys actually did uh, uh, and, and they're basically, you know, going for this stereotyped notion of the 60s as opposed to what the 60s were actually like. So, and I have no problem with that if they if they weren't trying to trump up this history and say that it was, it's such a social commentary on this crap. Because it's not. Because it's not accurate in the least. Um, also another little quick comment. Um, yeah, guys going into combat wearing suits. Yeah, that makes perfect bloody sense, especially against an alien enemy. Um, We're supposed to make contact with the National Guard. Yeah, and and stuff like when he says marginalized marginalized voices, like I, I gave you some history uh, historical dates. They were still relatively minor back then. Uh, helicopters were around in the 60s, by the way. They they uh, bubble helicopters were in, around in the 50s, and the Nazis invented a helicopter in the 30s. So uh, so you can let that one slide. Um, anyway, let's just turn this up a bit so we can actually see some actual gameplay. An empty checkpoint does not bode well. Let's look for now they're actually light. doing some pretty good uh, uh, atmospheric storytelling here. I will admit that they, they do have some some decent uh, uh, storytelling elements in, in the environments here. There there is an inherent problem here though. It's incredibly linear. It's really really linear, and once again that defeats the point of XCOM. Uh, XCOM is not a linear. Was not designed to be a linear game. It was designed. Oops, sorry. It was designed to be up. Oh, now now we're getting into some actual gameplay. Here we go. What in hell happened here? Federal agents, let's see some ID, pal. Uh, once again, Something that they could have handled a bit be uh, uh, far better is, is something like that. Is something like the, that that infiltrator uh, uh, alien that they they revealed. Um, they they could have had something like you know um, you know the guy just being there and talking to them like a normal person. You know, just seeming like he's a regular guy. You know, something like for example, uh, what happens in in you know the Thing movie. They they could have handled that so much better. And instead, you know, it's just you know scary. Oh, run at your face and and scare you by getting really close up moment. It's it's just it's not that frightening or, or, or creepy as opposed to what the original game was. And the original game is running on fucking sprites and it's scarier than this, you know? Alone in XCOM, Harvey will get slaughtered. He has to command his agents very precisely in order to survive. And here's another thing. As you can see, you're going to see it in a second. He's basically going to whip out... Um, um, uh, what what they're using it, it's similar to what Fallout 3 did when when they they created vats as opposed to um, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, you know the old turn-based system to you know to appease fans um, they they have time units as you see which is just like in the the original well not really like in the original but uh, you know they. It allows you to apply powers, and that would be interesting if it wasn't ripped off from Mass Effect. This is carbon copy Mass Effect, 
look you for pause the screen in Mass Effect and have this fall. exact same and setup. You have the powers power on both sides. You have, you know, you're, you're able to activate them whichever way you choose by targeting guys, stuff like that. This is just Mass Effect style combat, and it just shows how creatively bankrupt these developers are and that sounds harsh because it is they're not taking any risks they're not actually trying to expand on anything and actually trying to develop the game in any coherent fashion they're just you know crimping from from you know the the, the kid over on the next desk it's ridiculous in the body of that outsider and cause him to drop his and, and I, as I was mentioning, as you can see, it's incredibly linear, you know, chest high walls. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of games that do linearity really well. Something like that, as an example, is Mass Effect. It actually has some good linearity and allows for, and yet it still allows for choice. But that's not what XCOM was about. XCOM was about experiencing the game the way you wanted to experience it and developing it. Uh, uh, it the way enough. you wanted it so to, to, uh, uh, to to be, and the, the here of the fight away from himself, you can totally can tell that they're basically player. you know they're railroading you into this just this basically straight line. You can right, totally so see it. It's it's not as bad as say something like Final Fantasy XIII, which really really railroads you. But oh, it it just the ra the railroading looks so obvious, and and you can totally tell where they expect you to go, where what they want you to do. It's just. This is stuff that Half-Life wasn't doing because the guys who made Half-Life were smart enough to know that that was lazy design. <laughs> you know? What that does is and that game's like 14 years old now. He can use those agent powers outside of tactical mode as well by binding them to the